Hello friends, I'm Su. Today I'm going to talk about the nature of technical world. As everyone can see, we live in a technical world um, and the division of labor becomes so specific um, that you, if you want to get a job, you have to uh, train certain techniques to fit in a, a technical position to get a job. Um, and uh, if you want to build, if you want to build a future in general, or if you want to be an uh, immigrant worker, for example, uh, the best thing for you to do is to become a technician and uh, work in certain technical position. It used to be the case in America uh, that for Chinese, the best way to stay in America is to be a, a technician, to be a scientist. Um, uh, but nowadays, even uh, scientists and uh, technicians cannot stay in America because they say uh, they're Chinese spies, so they must go back to China anyway. But what is the nature of a technical world in which the best way to make a living, to survive uh, for ordinary people, is to be a technician? My answer may surprise you. My answer is that the nature of the technical world is barbarian, is savage ruling. In other words, the ruling of the West in our world is savage ruling. And how did I come to this conclusion? Um, as Chinese, we had experience in history. The Yuan Dynasty um, in the 13th and 14th century the Mongolian dynasty that lasted for about 97 years. Many things in Mongolia, China, in Mongolia dynasty in China, was very like the things we have today. And the Mongolians were evidently savages at the time. I believe nobody would disagree on this point. When Mongolians conquered China, they stormed all the cities and they killed everyone. Um, they cut everyone into pieces, actually. Uh, no matter if you're old, young, man or woman. But there's one exception. Blacksmith. The Mongolians didn't kill blacksmith. Because blacksmith can make weapons and fix a, a horse feet, etc. for the Mongolians. So blacksmith was technician in China at the time, um, in terms of the perspective of uh, Mongolians. But when Europeans conquered America, uh, they killed everyone. They made absolute genocide. They didn't even let uh, the blacksmith survive. Um, but that's not the comparison I want to make. The, co the comparison I want to make is in our time. Uh, when you see the Indian students, the Chinese students who study in America, um, actually the best way for, for them to stay, if not the only way, is to be a technician, to be a scientist, to be an IT engineer, uh, to get a job in America. The only use of minority for the Western white is uh, being a technician, doing technical work for them, um, or being slave labor, or you are superfluous. But the highest intelligence demonstrated in Chinese is not in the field of technology, but in the field of politics. If American system is a good system and a fair system, actually you will see all the senators in White House um, in uh, Parliament, all the officials, including President, are without exception all Chinese or Asians in general. But the reality is quite opposite. The Asians show least passion in politics in America. The Asians are the least enthusiastic people in politics, actually. They don't care about politics at all. You, you, you see black officials, black senators, but uh, you don't see Asians. You, you just don't see them. They, they, they are um, out of the map of politics. It somehow reminds me of the Mongolian dynasty in China, the Yuan dynasty, 
uh, they, the Mongolians pretend they also have a, a national exam system uh, that inherited from China. But what you see in reality is no real Chinese intellectuals participate in such exams. And almost all the officials in the government are Mongolians, are uncultured, uh, idiotic, um, completely idiotic Mongolians without any uh, education, culture, or intelligence at all. They're just uh, thugs on the street, these kind of people. And, and the Mongolians at the time get embarrassed a bit, so they want to encourage some Chinese also uh, participate in such exam and the officials, even when they are just puppets, but they, they, they just want to show there are a few of them. Uh, so what happened was uh, <laughs> some Chinese street thugs that uh, had no decency, had no culture, had uh, um, no intelligence at all, participated in such so-called uh, exams and, and become uh, some low-level officials and was uh, in the total control of the Mongolians. It's the same shit America is doing. They put some no, uh, minority puppets uh, in certain positions and pretend that yeah, we are open, that we are, uh, we have minorities, we have democracy, that uh, the people with different ethnicity can participate in uh, politics. Um, but if you just look at the United Nations, um, uh, when uh, the American representative, a, a black American representative, raised her hands to show support, to show agreement to a ceasefire proposal in Gaza. Um, her hand was immediately smashed by a white woman behind her. <laughs> this is a, a best definition, uh, a straightforward uh, uh, interpretation of, uh, of American politics. In any savage society, the tyranny would always try to uh, kick out the real uh, moral and intelligent person or at least put them in a very difficult situation, in a very low position of a society to make it very hard for them to survive. At the same time, the tyranny makes sure that the people he does put in the office around him are his puppets. Um, in Mongolian dynasty, the Mongolians actually created a rank system of occupations, a rank, a hierarchy, um, from higher to the lower. Um, um, and there were 10 ranks in total, and the lowest rank was a beggar. Uh, if you are a beggar, you belong to the lowest uh, uh, rank of a society. But, but the funny thing is, the ninth one was um, Confucian intellectuals. So, <laughs> so the most intelligent people in China um, at the time were classified as the ninth position, ninth rank in the Chinese society. Um, and by the way, the eighth one was prostitutes. So prostitution. Um, as a social rank is still ahead of uh, uh, real intellectuals, actually. Um, and the technicians, uh, like blacksmiths or tools maker uh, at the time, was ranked as uh, um, six or seven, I think. Um, in Cultural Revolution in China, when the Red Guards start to kill intellectuals, um, especially Confucian intellectuals, they shouted something like, uh, go to hell, the smelly ninth. Uh, smelly ninth, go to hell. Uh, this was a reference to the Yuan dynasty in which Mongolians label Confucius intellectuals as the ninth rank of the society. Um, anyway, it's very ironic that the Mongolian dynasty um, put the Confucius intellectuals uh, to the ninth rank of the society um, when at the same time pretending that they have their national exam system to pick up uh, uh, intellectuals <laughs> to be officials. And it's the same shit America is doing in our time. Um, 
it, it's different ways. It's it, because America have liberal democracy. They have uh, uh, these uh, democratic candidates. The stuff you know, uh, the means and forms are different, but the principle, the rules behind it, is the same. Um, so it makes all the sense to me that um, the real, the genuine intellectuals um, in Mongolia dynasty of China at the time withdraw from politics, withdraw from public life, and Chinese Americans in our time withdraw from American politics and withdraw from um, American public life. Um, and this somehow reminds me of what Hannah Arendt says in uh, either uh, the origin of totalitarianism or uh, Aishma in Jerusalem. I I'm not pretty sure, but she says something like, um, for intellectuals, for uh, people with conscience uh, who live in a society like Nazi Germany, what you can do and what you must do is to withdraw from public life, from politics, as a negative protest against the evil society, the evil system you have, you are uh, you're confronting. What goes hand in hand with the occupation rank in Mongolian Yuan dynasty was a racial ranking system. Uh, the Mongolians put uh, different races into four different ranks. The highest rank is Mongolia. Um, and the second rank are the Sermu. Sermu, Sermu refers to the, um, and the, uh, the minorities in the West, um, and the Arabs, uh, Persians, etc. Um, and the third rank was uh, the Han Chinese in the North, and the fourth rank was the Han Chinese in the South, the Southern Chinese. In today's Western society, there is also a racial rank. Even when uh, the white people don't admit that it exists, but it exists very dramatically, very vividly, it's just emperor's new cloth. Um, in today's Western society, the rank one is white people, pure white. Rank two is uh, white mixed. Um, and rank three is like uh, uh, brown, black, uh, Latinos, etc. Um, and rank four, the lowest rank, is Asians, actually. Um, it's very vivid to be seen. It's, it's not something I make up. If you live in the West for a long time, you experience, you see it very vivid. Um, that, like wherever you go, you go to shops, you go to public place, uh, you go to um, whatever places, then you will be treated very differently, very differently. High or low, uh, with respect or with uh, suppression, in terms of your race. The reason why both Mongolians and Western whites put Asians like Chinese to the lowest racial rank is that uh, Chinese are the least barbarian race, but the most cultured one. Barbarians, in their instinct, in their nature, worship barbarian instincts. They worship, uh, even they have barbarian enemies, but in the end of the day, uh, they still take uh, uh, other barbarians kind of uh, uh, brothers in some senses, uh, but lower than them, still lower than them. But what they really hate is the long barbarian people, the people who are highly cultured. They hate culture so much. They hate culture. Um, that's also why when Mongolians conquered China, um, when Mongolians conquered the uh, Middle East, the whole Arabic world, um, wherever they go, they actually burn all the books. They hate books. They hate books so much that they, they consider it as an insult to them or something. They, they just want to burn all the books and just throw them to the river and they feel good about it. Today's Western society is also a kind of anti-books society. Um, it's a combination of both Orwell's uh, 1984 and uh, uh, Adolf Huxley's A Brave New World. Um, in uh, 1984, uh, you see the tyranny 
burn the books and forbid people to read. Um, but in the brave new world, um, the tyranny doesn't even need to ban the books because it, it designs uh, uh, drugs and uh, a kind of vulgar way of uh, entertainment uh, and uh, sex, etc., to uh, completely distract people and people uh, lose interest in books anyway. That even the books are there available, nobody will read the book. Nobody read. The barbarians feel the sense of power only when they exercise violence, um, exercising uh, barbarian activities, um, uh, and in such activities they feel uh, they are overpowering the others, and they feel very good about it. Um, but when they face highly cultured human being, um, and when these cultured people start to talk and to gain authority over his um, knowledge and stuff, the barbarians feel very over being overpowered, and uh, it's a sense of uh, powerlessness, and uh, they, they get very angry. Actually, they, they hate this feeling. Um, but the most annoying thing is. The barbarians want to pretend that they are cultured, they have culture. Um, so what they do is um, they destroy the genuine culture and uh, uh, smash it, uh, cut it into pieces um, in the form of uh, the division of subjects um, in modern uh, West. And the division of subjects has no problem when it comes to natural science. You have physics or chemistry. Um, you have this certain field of uh, um, a biology, certain field of uh, um, medical uh, research. There's no problem with it. This is technical stuff. It's uh, um, the position of technicians. It should be specified. It should be expertise um, in very specific branches. But in the subjects of humanity, dividing the subjects into of different areas is a very bad thing, is a very bad thing. Um, it prevents human beings from being able to understand human humanity as a whole and reach a possible solution of it. Um, that's also why the, on YouTube sometimes you see the uh, right wing from the West, they talk about uh, geopolitics that you feel like that's really a joke. They don't understand anything, but they pretend that they understand everything. Uh, that's because uh, geopolitics cannot be singled out of uh, political economy. And these people have no understanding of economy. Their mindset is like the street thugs mindset. It's like uh, we live in a mafia society. Um, uh, this place is my mafia, my, my, my place. Uh, and there is another mafia there, uh, and uh, we just attack each other. We make uh, plans to uh, cooperate uh, and attack and uh, make a um, treaty and attack again. You know, this kind of street mafia thinking. And when they um, uh, think about politics in the same way, it's called uh, uh, geopolitical analysis. Um, but why, when you hear from this uh, uh, professors in uh, economics from economics uh, economists analysis uh, on politics it certainly make more sense because uh, because what supports politics is economy and what is behind the economy is politics the two are intertwined uh, one determines the other and the other start to determine uh, and this one again, so it's like a circle of determination. Um, that's also why, in order to understand um, today's uh, geopolitics, today's uh, economy situation is better. It's, it's better to read um, uh, Karl Marx's um, political economy theories. Um, it's much more helpful than any of their uh, new liberal uh, economic theories. The new liberal economists uh, try to single out uh, economy out of politics and pretending an economy can work on itself and it's uh, uh, some sense of freedom or free market, an invisible hand there, uh, 
But this is a lie. There's nothing called invisible hand. What is uh, invisible is a political hand. It is a political manipulation, actually. It, it, it's not something like uh, automatic, invisible. <laughs> There's nothing like that. But even when political economic theory can analyze uh, our reality to a much deeper level, um, it, in the end of the day, can still not solve the problem. Um, its solution will also fail. Socialism or communism in general alone cannot solve our um, today's problem as a whole. It cannot, it cannot deal with the complexities of humanity, of uh, historical problems remaining in our world. It's, uh, it offers a kind of better framework, but it, it alone cannot solve the problem. It will create more problems, actually. Because if we, if we try to solve the problem only from the political economical perspective, it's actually committing the same mistake as trying to solve the problem from the economic perspective or from the political perspective alone. What's behind political economy is the ethics and the morality of a society. And it determines the political economy. If you cannot solve the problem of ethics and morality, you will never solve the problem of political economy, even when um, how perfect your theory would sound like. Um, so if there's any better alternatives to the uh, political economy theory at all, it should be um, ethical, moral, political, economic theory. And we don't need to build new theories because we already had old civilizations that um, offered um, a full package of solutions of these intertwined problems as a whole. And it worked very fine. It worked very well. It was very successful. One was Chinese Confucius civilization. The other was Islam. The legal interpretation of Quran offers a package of good solutions to the intertwined ethical, moral, political, economic problems altogether. Islam deals with financial capitalism very well. Its very idea of being against interest of usury um, solves the problem from its roots, actually. If we look at the prevailing of Christianity and Islam uh, historically, um, they both dealt with the debt crisis at the time and the oligarchy uh, dictatorship. The difference was Christianity failed, but Islam succeeded. Um, for me, uh, if we can um, defend ourselves against a Western invasion and defeat them completely in the future, um, both Confucianism and Islam can be good solution for the future world. And in China, I still prefer Confucianism because it's part of uh, uh, 2,500 years Chinese culture, cultural tradition, actually. And if the Communist Party want to succeed, it must bring more methodologies from Confucianism under the name of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Um, and in the West, especially in Europe, I don't see any other solutions other than Islam. From my perspective, Islam is their only solution. If there's any future at all for Europe, it must be, it has to be an Islamic future. Because Europe had this one God religion, Abraham religion uh, tradition. The problem for them is their religion was corrupted 
by the Romans was replaced by the pagans. But these people, the Europeans, are used to the mindset of one god religion anyway. So Islam is the only solution for them.、Um, it doesn't matter to me、um, how people hate Islam in Europe nowadays.、Uh, that the level of Islamophobia is very high.、Um, the right wings want to、um, blame all their economic problems on. Uh, immigrants, um, Muslims, and、uh, um, Islam.、Um, they say, "Yeah, this is the cause of the problem."、Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just the beginning of、uh, emotional dialectics. Once you hate something so much, you actually already start to love it deeply in your mind.、Um, Please allow me to come back to the topic of the nature of、uh, um, technical world.、Um, this technicality,、um, so to speak, started with Machiavelli. Actually,、um, since Machiavelli, politics becomes a technique in the West,、um, being singled out, not as political economy, not as.、Uh, Uh, religious, ethical, moral, political economy as whole, but as political political techniques, as being singled out, and the ultimate objectification of such、uh, political techniques is、uh, the liberal democracy you see in the West now, which is totally manipulated by the oligarchy capitals by the fan. Financial capitalism. I somehow think of、uh, Martin Heidegger again.、Um, he said something like, "Our world is、uh, um, darkened by the、uh, techniques that we live in a terrible world, being darkened by the、um, uh, tool-using、um, brutes with all these techniques and stuff." What I want to say is,、um, the fetish of techniques is a sign of. Barbarian society, of savage society,、um, and、um, to make politics a technique is a barbarianization of politics at the same time. And the barbarianization of politics is eventually anti-politics.、Um, but unfortunately.、Um, The modernization of the West started with the、uh, technicalization of politics from Machiavelli, and with all the crimes they committed to their own people and to the rest of the world,、um, they hardly learn anything. They try to improve it, but uh, um, they didn't really improve it.、Um, they want to make progress, but they didn't really progress. But just create more and more disasters.、Um, Because、um, this problem started from its roots,、um, the division of、uh, subjects, of labors, of, of of everything in general really scares me.、Uh, because from my own experience in the university, I was in the philosophy department. Actually,、uh, the the professors they scared me sometimes because there's someone who's、uh, expert in Kierkegaard. And、uh, once I talked to him about Kant, and he told me, "Oh well, I have no idea about Kant. I'm an、um, expert in Kierkegaard, so I only research on Kierkegaard."、Uh, uh, such was also the case within some other professors. They、uh, specialize in one philosopher, in one author, and completely ignore the others. And this scares me so much, actually. In my opinion, the Western academia, as a whole, is completely corrupted. It's it's rotten to its、uh, everywhere actually, from from、um, top to the bottom. You do have some、um, real genuine intellectuals, but they are very marginalized within the current academia system. Very marginalized.、Um, people like、uh, Mike Hudson must、uh, take interviews and make videos on YouTube to make himself known to their. Public,、uh, 
and uh, probably to make some money from it. Uh, otherwise, he will starve or something. But people like him is supposed to serve as the president of the United States of America, actually. Not someone like Joe Biden, not someone like Donald J. Trump. These presidents are either puppets or joker. But I also don't see any positive signs of changes, not from the West. Um, things will just go more shitty, um, and eventually there will be wars worldwide, and started by the West. They will try to conquer the world again, but uh, this time I don't think they will succeed. They will be defeated this time. Um, and uh, what rises from violence is destined to perish in violence. And unfortunately, I don't see other alternatives so far. And if the West perish, uh, the ancient civilizations will just come back. Um, and they have been proven to be a good solution for humanity. And they will stay as solutions for humanity. Okay, guys, I just uh, stopped for today. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Bye.